Hey there, it's Jamie. Welcome back. In the last video, we used spatial analysis to help get a visual on which states are doing a better job at getting people vaccinated, fully vaccinated against the coronavirus. This is the chart that we came up with. When I look at it, the thing that sticks out to me or the question that comes up is that doesn't it look to you like the states that have a relatively large percentage of the population fully vaccinated, like Alaska, the Dakotas, and West Virginia, those seem like states that have relatively low populations. I mean, it's not perfect. Idaho also has a low population and a relatively low vaccination rate. But then I glance at the states with the big populations, California, Texas, Florida, and New York. Those states seem to be consistently fairly low in their overall vaccination rate. And it makes me wonder, is there a relationship between the size of a state in terms of its population and its ability to get its population vaccinated? To answer this question, what we need is a scatter plot. That will allow us to put one variable on the x-axis, one variable on the y-axis, and see how they relate together. So I'm going to open a new worksheet, and I'm going to ask these questions. So in Tableau, our x-axis population would get placed in the columns, and our y-axis percentage of people who have received two doses of the vaccine is going to go in the rows. So I'm going to assume that population is my independent variable, because I don't think that the vaccine affects the population. Rather, I think that it's states possibly that have larger populations that are finding it harder to distribute their vaccines hypothesis, right? So that goes in the columns. And then the dependent variable, the variable that I think is being affected by population, is the number of people that have gotten two doses, or the percentage of people who've gotten two doses. Both of these, by default, come out calculated using sum, and I want to change them both from sum to average. Drop down menu from my measure being sum to my measure being average. And then this isn't so great. It only gives me one dot. Well, why is that? It's because I need it to detail it out by state. So I'm going to grab state. I'm going to drop it, in, grab, drop it into detail. And then it's going to fill up a lot, except for this big dot over here where there's 120 million people. Um, and that are those are the observations that don't fit into one of the states, right? Department of Corrections, the entire US altogether. So I'm just going to exclude that one. Okay, here are, my, here are my dots. Each of these corresponds to a state. So here's California, our most populous state with a relatively low vaccination rate. And then if we come over here, we've got Alaska with a population of 731,000 people and a much higher vaccination rate. So looking at this, I, it's hard to eyeball whether or not there's really a relationship. And for this, we need essentially linear regression. We need a trend line to be plotted through the data that will show us what exactly is the relationship between population and vaccination rate. And is that relationship statistically significant? Or is it likely to be something, this relationship that we're seeing, would we see this if there was truly no relationship? It was just, would we see this by chance? So to get that trend line, I go into the analytics tab next to data, and I choose trend line. I just drag it onto the chart, and then I drag it into the type of trend line I want. I want a linear trend line. I want to see if there's a linear relationship as population increases. Does the percentage of people that are fully vaccinated change in a specific way? Ah, look at that. That line shows a downward relationship. States with higher populations have a smaller portion of the population that's fully vaccinated. But don't get too excited because you can see a negative trend line or a positive trend line or a trend line that has a slope that's not equal to zero and that doesn't mean that that relationship is statistically significant. I'm gonna highlight over the trend line or, or scan over the trend line and I'm gonna see here that they give us first the equation of the line, so that the average percent with two doses, it is a function of population, but that coefficient 
negative 3.8 times e to the negative 10th. That's very, very small. The r squared is 13%, 0.132 translates to 13%, which basically tells us that 13% of the variation in the vaccination rates for people who are fully vaccinated can be explained by population, and the p-value is 0 0.008, which is less than 1. How we would interpret this statistically is that there does seem to be a statistically significant relationship between the population of a state and the number of and the, and the percentage of the population that is fully vaccinated with both doses of the coronavirus, but the relationship is not you know, particularly strong. It only explains about 13% of the variation. So it may be that large states are finding it harder to distribute the vaccine. However, 87% of the variation in that proportion of the population that's fully vaccinated is explained by other factors, not how many people are in your state. So, you know, it might be a little bit harder for larger states, but 87% of the levers they can pull to get that vaccination rate up are independent of the state size. All right, that was a lot. Happy calculating. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you in class on Tuesday.